Hey everyone, we are going to work out the example problems that I wanted you to try on your own. This is here if you want to um, see why the answers are what they should be. So we are looking at the drug testing. So your two options as far as your first part of the tree diagram are whether you do drugs or you don't do drugs. And then from there, it comes to what did you get on your drug test. So either your results are positive or negative, as in, you, yes, you use drugs, or no, you don't use drugs. So it says that 4% of prospective employees use drugs. So that would be 0 .04. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see, even at, you know, this um, upper level of mathematics. People forget that 4% is 0 .04 and not 0 .4. So please don't make that silly mistake. All right? It's not 40% of people that use drugs. In this case, it's 4%. So then 0 .96, do not use drugs. Now it says the false positive rate. When would you get a false positive? You would get a false positive when you don't do drugs and it comes up with a positive result. So this is like saying, what's the chance that you get positive given that you don't do drugs. So that's 5%, which is again 0 0.05, and then this should be 0.95 down here. And then the false negative rate, false negative would happen if you do do drugs, but you get a negative result. So what's the chance? It's basically saying the chance that it's negative given that you do drugs, and that is 10%. That makes that 9%. What percent of employees will test positive? There are two ways to have positive. Either it's a correct positive or an incorrect positive. So we have 0 0.04 times 0.9. We have 0.96 times 0.05. So we get those two values and we add them together, which gives us about 8 will test positive. Now, what percent will actually use illegal drugs? I should say, what percent who test positive actually use illegal drugs? So, this is like asking, what's the probability that you use drugs given that you tested positive? So we need to use that formula from before. So on the top in my numerator, I'm going to have drugs and a positive outcome. And that's going to be over just the probability that you tested positive. Okay, so drugs and positive was up here. And that was 0 0.04. And and just positive was 0 0.084. So you divide those and you get 476. So about 47.6% of those who test positive actually use illegal drugs. And I realized I made a mistake. This new brainer should be 0 0.036 from up there. I was just looking at that. And that was not the correct answer. So, there's the proper answer. Alright, the next one, talking about the forecast. Now, it was a little bit of a trick question. Uh, we can't do one of these because it's not super independent, right? The only way we can do it is if we know they're independent. And I know technically weather's never independent, but one's going to be more um, dependent than the other. So because Harrisonburg and Stanton are so close, uh, and we don't know the conditional probabilities, they're not independent events, and we can't figure that out. However, if we assume that the chance of rain in Harrisonburg is independent of the chance of rain in Denver, we would simply multiply our two probabilities together, because they're independent, and get 25%. So for the next one, about 55% of students participate in a school athletic team at some level. About 5% of those go on to play on a college team. What percent of high school students play in a sport in high school and go on to play a sport in the NCAA? So if we did a tree diagram, which is what I would do, 
We've got high school sport, and then we've got no sport. So we've got 55% that play the high school sport, and then 45% down here. And then it says 5% of these athletes go on to play in college. So NCAA, we've got 5%. And then the other 95% do not. So what percent go on to play in high school and go on to play in the NCAA? So we would simply do 55% times 5%, which gives us 0 0.0275, which is about 3%. Last one that we're going to do for this video. The first trimester screen is a non-invasive test given the first trimester of pregnancy. Um, according to the study published, approximately 5% of normal pregnancies will receive a positive test. Among 100 women, what is the probability that there will be at least one false positive? So they're telling me that the probability of getting a false positive is 5% because it says approximately 5% will receive 5% of normal pregnancies will receive a positive result. Now among 100 women, uh, we want to assume that each pregnancy, each woman's pregnancy is independent of the other. What's the probability to be at least one false positive? The easiest way to figure out the probability of at least one false positive is to figure out the probability of no false positives and then we subtract that from 1 because it's the complement. So the probability of not getting a false positive would be 95% and how many women are we doing? 100. So that's like to the 100th power. So that's going to be 1 minus 0.00592-ish, which is going to give us 0.09408-ish. So 99.4%. So pretty high. All right, so that is all of that worked out for you. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, there was one more, but we're going to save that for class because um, this is going to help us with our quiz. So, yeah. All right. Bye, guys.